Um, welcome everyone to uh, Plant Powered Metro New York's Cooking with Chef Carol. Uh, my name is Wendy Sachs and I'm a member of the board for Plant Powered Metro New York. Plant Powered Metro New York empowers people to find better health and overcome chronic disease through whole food plant-based nutrition. Together with a wide network of grassroots leaders, organizers, and educators, we raise awareness about the dramatic health benefits of whole food plant-based nutrition. With a food as medicine approach, we offer education, build supportive communities that empower people to make lifestyle changes and organize and lead projects that spark changes to food policy, practice, and culture. So today we're on our series, Cooking with Chef Carol, and we'll explore the delicious world of plant-based cooking and baking without oil, salt, and sugar. Chef Carol will walk us through today's topic, which is onigiratsu and other Asian delights. <laughs> um, this was inspired to keep things easy and have some light um, meals uh, for the summertime. Chef Carol is the <laughs> culinary educator for Plant Powered Metro New York, the Marlene, JC, Marlene Meyerson JCC, um, and a Food for Life instructor for the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. As an artist turned chef, her intention is to appeal to taste as well as to the eye while promoting longevity and health. Um, she's appeared numerous times on Chef AJ's holiday cooking presentations. And of course, you can catch all of our previous shows, Cooking with Chef Carol on the PPMNY YouTube channel. Her website is the veggievanguard.com. I'll put it in the chat in a little while. And on Instagram, she's at the veggie vanguard. So as usual, please keep yourselves muted. Let us know where you're from in the chat if you'd like, and please ask questions in the chat and we'll allow um, intermittently time for the questions. And if we don't get to them, we'll save 15 minutes at the end um, to ask uh, Carol directly the questions. I'll also answer as best as I can and we'll get to as many as we can. One quick health tip. Carol will be using nori. Nori is a seaweed that's very rich in iodine and iodine is very beneficial for thyroid health and um, there are all kinds of other benefits. <laughs> and I will put the link to the benefits and the, and the if you overdose, um, on iodine um, also in the chat. So there'll be a link to an article and a link to Dr. Greger's video on it. And here we go. Um, Carol, what's on the menu today? Welcome everyone. I'm all so happy. I just saying hello to all of you. I don't see individually, you know, you're all ho Hollywood squares to me at the moment. So if I'm um, not welcoming you personally, I just want to thank all of you um, for coming today. Um, I think I've done these shows we're way over a year now. And I always worry, is anyone coming, you know, so I just so appreciate that everyone shows up. Um, you know, if you may remember from last month, I left you and said, I think we're going to make pizza because uh, I've asked, had so many people talk to me about yeah, how do I make pizza if I'm a, if I'm on a vegan SOS uh, lifestyle. And I, as I was talking to Wendy and my colleagues and I said, you know what? Nobody wants to put their oven on. Who wants to put an oven on in the summertime? So I came up with a class that was going to be cool and refreshing. So that if you're going to Central Park or you're going to any park um, and you just want to have picnic food or some of you maybe are going on your first airplane flight to visit friends or family on a gear zoo the sushi sandwich is the perfect thing to take on the airplane with you because it comes already wrapped in its little sandwich and its little saran wrap. So I'm very excited about showing you that. And then the second thing that we're making today is a, a, buck, a ginger buckwheat noodle um, uh, salad. And any of you that have seen me and come to the Food for Life classes, you might be familiar with this uh, second dish, but you know what? Everyone loves this dish and there's no way that I couldn't not show it to you. And the fact is this is just ginger noodles and it can be different throughout the year as the seasons change. So I thought, why not show you something that maybe you've already seen before, but you know what? It might have different vegetables in it this time. So it's gonna be not the same thing that you've seen before. So let's get started because um, we have a lot of assembly to do and a bunch of ingredients to talk about, okay? Uh, 
when he started out and started talking about nori. And this is how you buy nori. It's in a package like this. And it's basically, uh, you know, uh, has a lot of iodine in it. And it's one of the best things for you. And I know it took me a long time to learn to like this, actually. Some people, um, I could like it when it was sushi, but it wasn't sometimes, it took a while for me to learn to love it. And it comes in these really big sheets and it has a little, um, always has a little packet inside to help preserve the freshness of it and keep it crisp. So no, this is nori, and um, basically you mostly are familiar with it when it's the shape of a sushi roll, right? When it's rolled with rice and the filling. So we're doing the exact same thing, only instead of making something round like sushi, we're making a flat sandwich, okay? And I have several options to put into the sandwich, and maybe some of you will come up with some extra ones in the chat. Um, extra fillings, but we'll go over uh, all of this, but I just wanted to show you. And just so you know, sushi is one of the actually healthiest things for you. It is probably a third, of, uh, a half of it actually is protein. And then the other half of it is fiber. So those two combinations of fiber and protein uh, in one dish is actually a very good thing for you to have. So that's why we have the uh, Japanese. They're very smart about longevity, I think, and, and, and how long they live. So we have this nori. The other thing that we're having is special, special rice, which is called sushi rice, okay? And this particular brand is an organic California sushi rice. And this is a white rice, okay? Now, many of you will say, well, you know what? I don't eat white rice. And I want to tell you that it's okay. You can make this sandwich or sushi with brown rice. You can make it with red rice, or you could make it with black rice. But this white sushi rice is specifically a very short grain. So if you're going to buy brown rice, you want to use the very short grain. And just because it says sushi doesn't mean that it's already ready for sushi. It just means that it's a short grain white rice, okay? And what? how does this rice differ? Not only is it a short grain, but what you want to do, and I've made a whole bowl of it, okay, in advance, okay? And I can't do this for you. You can't cook it and wait for cooking. So I've made a whole bowl of it. But basically, um, in the recipe that I gave you, it says use seven ounces, which is really one cup, actually, about one cup of this white rice. And then what's very, very important is that you put it in a colander and then you rinse it and you rinse it and rinse it and rinse it, maybe three, maybe four times. I usually just let the cold water run over the rice and you look at the water that's coming out. And once that water starts to be clear, no longer cloudy, no longer all the starches are gone. Then what you wanna do is uh, take the rice and put it in a bowl and then you want to soak the rice, okay? Now you might say, God, who's going to do this? This is a lot of work, right? But you know what? You can just do it ahead of time and it's not a lot of work. It's kind of like people say bread making is a lot of work. Well, you don't stand over the bread for eight hours while it's rising. You don't. You, you mix it and then you leave for three or four hours. Well, this is this, or the beans. Who says, I don't want to make beans uh, because you have to soak them. You're not standing and watching the beans. So you're not standing to watch the rice either, okay? You're basically letting it soak in the soap. You can leave it on the counter for like 30 minutes. Last night before I went to bed, I rinsed the rice and then I put it in the refrigerator. I soaked it overnight and then I woke up this morning and it literally cooked in 20 minutes. And after it cooks for 20 minutes, you turn the light off and then you let it sit for 10 minutes, okay? So the next step after you've cooked your rice is to make it so that it's sushi rice, okay? And normal sushi rice has three things. It has a vinegar, it has a little bit of salt, and it has a little bit of sugar, okay? Now, two of those ingredients I don't promote. <laughs> I don't promote salt, and I usually don't promote sugar. Um, so what I use is just, you have to put some kind of, um, vinegar on the rice 
which I recently learned is a very ancient technique that the um, Japanese used. Um, they used to preserve the fish actually. So they would ferment the rice, put the fish in the rice, and then they would, um, that was their way of kind of preserving the fish. And then eventually all of that went away and they, they did continue to season and, and use vinegar for putting on the rice. So basically I took white rice and I used a couple tablespoons of this brown rice vinegar. Okay, and I'll just show it to you here. This is a particular brand, Eden, and it's brown rice vinegar, okay? And you might say, well, I don't have any brown rice vinegar. What am I gonna do? Okay, well, it's good to have this, okay? If you're gonna be making sushi or other Asian dishes, it is just good to invest in it and have it in your cabinet, in your pantry. But if you think this is a one-time thing, just go ahead and use some rice wine vinegar, okay? And I'm sure many of you have rice wine vinegar, okay? That is a very common thing. And before I get carried away at just having a whole show about rice and wine vinegar, which I could do, um, I'm wanting to remind you that there are two kinds of rice and wine vinegars. Well, there are many kinds of rice and wine vinegars. There's red, there's black vinegar, but these are the most common, which is like a pale yellow color. And this is this particular one is lightly seasoned. I just want you to know it says lightly seasoned. And what also it says is 30% less sodium and sugar. So if you're using the seasoned kind, just beware that has a little bit of sugar in it, okay? And it is delicious, but it is because it's very sweet. And I tend to use what they call the genuine brood, genuine brood, and sodium-free, sugar-free. And it says that very large on this bottle. So I tend to use this more often, but I do have this in my pantry, okay? So two kinds of, of of rice wine vinegar, you could substitute and put a little bit of this vinegar on the rice because you basically are trying to sour the rice, okay? That's what, that is the goal here, is to sour your rice. But in the perfect world, you're learning to buy brown rice vinegar, okay? That is my short and sweet summation of the vinegar. Um, so we're gonna use the nori and we're gonna use the rice. Now, other things that we're going to put into this sandwich. We are going to, I gave um, you in the recipes, and let's just talk for a minute about the recipes, right? I always tell you, I put them in this little plastic three ring binder, so it can go right back into the notebook. And this way, the paper doesn't get stained and dirtied and wet. So this is my recipe here, okay? And we, in the recipes, I gave you two things that you maybe have had before. If you are keeping the recipes from previous shows, we have done things with marinated tofu, and we've done things with what I'm calling carrot locks, okay? And I'm just going to kind of run through those things with you, how you do these things, because there are times when I've talked about this, actually, uh, Hanukkah, during Hanukkah, we made lox and bagels. So if you want to go back to an episode and see how you make the carrot box, but I'm going to kind of quickly tell you, okay? And you'll just have to follow along, but you do have the recipe in your um, packet when that got sent. So in foil, okay? Uh, this, a couple of, like two days ago, in two days ago, I roasted carrots, okay? I try to look for the big fat carrots when I'm doing this, okay? And what does this mean? It means I put uh, about a pound of carrots and I folded the foil and made a little tent. And then I cooked the carrots at 350 degrees for, I don't know, about 40 minutes, 45 minutes. And how do you know it's done? Well, you actually just put a fork in it or a toothpick and it feels what I'm gonna call al dente, just like when you cook pasta, right? A little firm, but a little bit, a little bit, but also soft, okay? So you take this carrot, and I'm just gonna get my peeler and my knife so you see. So this is how we're gonna make carrot box, okay? So we're gonna trim off the tops and bottoms, and you know not to throw this away. This is part of the bowl of things that have stock in it, okay? That always stays close by me. And you wanna peel, up until now I've not peeled the carrots, right? 
the carrots have gone into their little tent without being peeled. And then you're gonna take a peeler and you're actually going to peel the um, carrot. And you're gonna get rid of, again, you're gonna save and you're just gonna peel the carrot. Now, sometimes what happens is the peeler gets all caught up with this carrot. Uh, and I hate that when that happens, but it does happen. But again, just showing you what, how am I gonna get carrot locks? Now, I want to admit to you the years that I ate fish. For about 20 years, I was a pescatarian, and I ate almost all vegetables, but I supplemented it sometimes with salmon and lox because I grew up and with lox. And it was something kind of hard for me to give up. But I have to tell you, the minute now that I have a carrot and I smell this roasted carrot, I now think about box it's so crazy I, I i it's a crazy thing because this actually can end up tasting like lox and then the fish get to stay in the sea it's amazing so how are we going to make our ribbons we're going to take our peeler and we're going to lay this on okay and we're going to just take it and press hard right so you're going to start to end up with these nice little ribbons okay and you and what i do is i get a little a glass container that has a lid. And I just start putting all of the ribbons, laying them in to the jar, okay? So again, just like when they're cutting, if any of you have ever seen them cut fish at Zabar's on the Upper West Side, there is a true art. Well, I'm pretending this is a true art by cutting up ribbons of carrot, okay? So we're just peeling that and we're making these beautiful ribbons. Now, what is going to make it to taste like lox? It's going to take a little bit of two ingredients. One is called um, liquid smoke, and the other one is a product, a Japanese product called marin. Okay, and I threw out my bottle. I just finished a bottle of marin, and um, those two ingredients would make the lox. So I just want to show you how beautiful this is. Now, this tastes so delicious that honestly, if you did not want to take it one step farther to make it taste smoked, make it taste a little bit fishy, you could use it just like this. I mean, this carrot is divine. And I, I would actually try to make a salad with it to tell you the truth. But I just want to show you that this is what this looks like. Don't want to spend too much time on that. I just wanted to kind of refresh your memory. All of you haven't been watching and following me since last year, but the Hanukkah recipe when we made bagels and lox, you can go to our YouTube channel and you can easily see the process. But I basically just showed it to you. Okay, so we have these beautiful pieces. We're not, I'm just going to throw them in here for now with our marinade. This has been marinating for uh, almost two days now. Okay, so that is gonna be part of our filling. And for now, I mean, I will eat this if it weren't in front of you, but it's just going into my stockpile, okay? The other thing that we're putting inside is our marinated tofu. And that's another thing that we did last summer when we made Vietnamese rolls, because I love marinating tofu. And you don't need to have oil, sesame oil, or any kind of oil. Maybe some of you could cook your tofu in a air fryer if you have. But for me, I just bake it at a very high temperature. And I have actually, I actually baked it on a sheet pan. I just wanna show you that this is what I, they came off of this pan here. Um, I had a, a old piece of foil. So I just marinated the tofu. Again, you have that recipe, but it's simple, simple, simple. It is orange juice. It is, I use tamari. If you can't, if you're allergic or you can't have any kind of soy product, then you could use some liquid aminos or coconut aminos. So you want the tamari, the orange juice. I always slice up some garlic, some chili flakes and um, chili flakes and also some ginger. Okay, and I just make a marinade, okay? And I don't put any honey, I don't put any maple syrup, I don't put any, any sweetener in it because the orange juice, just the orange juice in itself, when it cooks on the high tea, is gonna help brown and it's 
becomes a sugar, right? So there's no need to add more sugar to your tofu, okay? So I press the tofu, marinate the tofu. Sometimes I marinate it for only 10 minutes if I'm in a hurry. Other times I marinate it overnight, doesn't matter. But we are gonna have slices of tofu, just like you could have inside your sushi, we're gonna have it inside of our anagirazu, okay? So that, those are the two main things. Just like a sandwich, you have main things. And could you have a million other things? Of course. Um, I have a teeny little piece of red cabbage here that I brought out because I'd love to get rid of this. It's been in my fridge for weeks now. Um, we're going to actually deal with this avocado. And I would like to just show you this beautiful avocado. And I am so lucky living now in the Southwest because I don't get bad avocados anymore. Look at that, it is perfect, perfect, perfect. Like literally perfect. And I love these little teeny, teeny ones. And if you actually shop at a Trader Joe's, I used to love to buy those little bags of small avocados. That way you're not buying the big avocado unless you have a family and you're sharing your avocado. If you're single like me and you're trying not to eat the whole avocado, it's really great to buy these little teeny ones. And and we're going to get a spoon and we're just going to um, look at I don't even know sometimes where my spoons live, but we're going to just take this out in the normal way, right? The way that you would with a spoon so that it's just out like that, right? And we're going to just put this on our cutting board and maybe we'll, we'll just, we're just going to have probably, I'm just going to slice this because we're definitely having avocado in it. That's for certain. And you could have, Carrot, we're gonna have our carrot locks. And maybe right now we'll do a little bit of slicing of this cabbage, just very, very thin. Another brilliant, I think a really beautiful idea for this kind of sandwich would also be um, sweet potatoes, cooked sweet potatoes. And you could just, well, you'll see when we're assembling it, but you would just, just like, a, think about it like the avocado, you would just, smash it into a nice thin layer on top of the rice. And I think sweet potatoes would be delicious, okay? Um, another great idea would be the beets. If you cook beets and you also just slice them thin. And again, think about when you see sushi, um, if any of you uh, live in New York and you're going to be on sushi, how many kinds of sushi they have that are all just made out of vegetables and no one ever talks about any fish. It's just all vegetables. So there is an infinite amount, okay? But today we can't use an infinite amount of things, but we are inspired with our colors. And the other thing that I have that is also part of this is we're gonna use black sesame seeds, which I'll just try to show you are like this, okay? They're just like, they're, they're a little thicker than the kind you know that are beige, but these are black and again, if you don't have black sesame seeds, I really encourage you to stop, stop them in your pantry. They are so delicious. And when are you gonna eat them? You're gonna eat them on everything. Literally, you're gonna sprinkle them on salads. You're gonna sprinkle them on your sweet potato. You're gonna sprinkle, they're just gonna be, they're delicious. And it's so nice to have them, the beige ones and the black ones. So um, I encourage you to get the little black ones, okay? And then, of course, of course, if you desire a little bit of pickled ginger, okay? Now, you'll say, oh, the pickled ginger, anything that you find in brine in the store will often have a little bit of salt and a little bit of sugar. But I look the other way, honestly, because why do I look the other way in these kinds of things? We're using this much, okay? <laughs> this much is not going to be so much sugar, okay? so. I, and the sweetness and the tartness, that is what you're looking for, okay? So we're gonna clear this counter. Oh, and before we even go any further, I have to show you very exciting things. This is something very special, and I want to tell you what these are. Sometimes people call them Tokyo turnips. Um, and I know that you could find them. I was given an entire bunch yesterday when I bought pea shoots at this, at this farmer's stand. He said, do you know about 
my particular Tokyo radishes, and he and he called them the Han, Han, Hanukurai, Hanukurai, and I give the spelling to Wendy so she could put it in the chat in case you want to look them up. But for those of you that you know, most of you know about radishes, right? And these look just like radishes. If you were to put them as, next to each other, they look the same, right? These are red radishes. That these are common. These again are turnips, but why are they so fantastic? They are tender, they are sweet, and so delicious. I cannot even explain to you how delicious. So I encourage all of you, sometimes I wanna play a game with all of you actually, and everyone brings one mystery vegetable that they've never had, you know, and just let's all talk about the vegetable because I encourage all of you to go to the farmer's market or ask your friend who has a garden because usually people are growing, you know, fascinating things and maybe you don't know about it, but maybe you'll love it. And maybe you just have to find out about it. So this is my little surprise for the day, I guess, because I was given it as a gift. Um, mm, mm, mm. Raw, not cooked, eat it raw, absolutely delicious. I cannot explain to you any more than that, okay? So now we have to clear the path here because it's very important that everybody sees exactly what's going on here, okay? So we are going to move some of these ingredients here and we are going to maybe move this up. Now the key is always to have clear mind, clear counter, right? Nothing, everything, I'm always determined if the counter, if the counter looks like a tornado, you cannot cook, okay? You have to have clear space, clear mind, clear counter, okay? I'm taking the saran wrap, which I almost never use. It's something that I use less and less every day. It's not good for our environment, but I make an exception here. Why? Because it's gonna wrap our sandwich. It's gonna allow us to do a to-go thing. And it's just a really good thing for this moment. So we're gonna put this saran wrap on the counter, okay? It has two purposes, okay? Then we're gonna get out our nori. And I'm just showing you, this is our nori. I actually have two packages. Here's the other brand, there's two. This one particular is organic untoasted, Emerald, Emerald Cove, okay? I'll keep that there. And then we're going to take it out and we have to be careful. It does break like the rice paper. Um, and I'm just going to take, you know what? I'm going to take them all out. So just, I'll never get them back in. So that means I have to make all of these things. Now, the minute you take it out, you say, oh, this is sushi. Because if you look closely, I don't know if you can actually see this, but there are two sides, okay? There's a shiny side and there's a dull side. Now. In the camera, it might be reflective, so you might not be able to tell. But in here, when I'm just looking, there is a dull and there is shiny. And we're gonna put the shiny side down. But I also wanna point out that if you were making sushi, and maybe many of you have done that, there's actually really nice perforated lines that actually, they actually show you where to cut the sushi. You can probably see that, like right now, just like that, okay? So just, bringing that up as a, as a thing. Now it's very important to keep these over here so I don't get them wet. Again, shiny side down, right? And we're gonna make it so that it's a diamond, okay? A diamond facing, so points, right? You see how it looks like a diamond. So the very first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna imagine a square that's gonna be about two and a half inches square, okay? So we're gonna get our rice, okay? And we're going to, now it's sticky, right? It's sushi rice. And we're going to put some down. Okay, I'm gonna put just about this much down. It could be too much, but like, let's just say that. Okay, everybody can see. Now what I'm gonna do is wet my hands. Now that part is very important and they're dripping right now. So I'm gonna lightly pat so they're still wet. See, they're still wet. And I'm gonna just use my hands here to shape this, okay? Now we want to have, like I said, 
a, a, a nice little square. We're shaping the square. And I think I've got it actually. Put it exact. That's a wow, wow, wow. Okay. And that I would say is probably a quarter inch thick. Now you don't want to make your sandwich too thick, right? This would be like going to the deli and ending up with, you know, I don't know. I have to tell you, in the old days of my life, in my life, I ate corned beef sandwiches that were two inches thick, but you don't want this to end up being so gigantic. You want it to be so that it's manageable, right? You never want, so that's that. Look how pretty, I can't show you, but you can see that there's a perfect square. It's about two and a half inches. Okay, so now we decide how are we gonna layer this? And we are gonna start with, I'm gonna just, this particular one is gonna be having the carrot one. Okay, and I wanna get to the bottom of my layers here because this is, and then any of these, I don't really want it hanging off, okay? I want it the same exact size as my little square. So we're just gonna layer that. And it is just like making a sandwich if you had whole wheat bread, right? Um, and most of you probably just throw together a sandwich. But when I learned to make a sandwich in the restaurant, you had to be thinking, what's on top? Is it the avocado next to the turkey? Or is the avocado next to this and the chutney? And how is the sandwich built? You actually have to do a little bit of thinking if you're going to make it look really nice when it's cut open. OK, so that is that layer. I actually think I'm going to put a layer to not very much, um, in fact, so little that I'm going to slice it. And I'm just gonna put a couple thin layers of the ginger, cause I love the ginger. And if you were so imposed, you could put a little wasabi in it too, or you could save that for later. Okay, and then we're gonna put a little bit of avocado. Okay, again, just we're going to, I'll put it going the different direction, okay? So I'm putting three slices. Everybody can see that. I can try to lift it up for you so that you can see it. Let's just see if I can do this carefully. But you see how that looks? You see it just slid off. You know, that's, that's how slippery the rice is. So we're gonna carefully slide that back on. And I want a little bit of cabbage. I cannot resist throwing in a little more vegetables. That is the nature and prettiness of things, right? Purple. Now we have to also, I like putting a little bit of the sesame seeds in now, okay? So that it's in the center. And then we have to get our hands wet again for the last layer, okay? So I'm just going to take this and we're going to take this carefully, put the rice on, going to start forming it. And everyone is, if you watch it, you could say, oh, I didn't know I could do this. And honestly, nobody taught me this. I just figured it out. But you do not want everything out of control. Okay, that part is very important. Okay, so you see what we have now is perfect. We have rice, fillings, and then rice again. And I am gonna wash my hands, dry them, and I wanna put a little more I'm, I don't know, maybe my middle name is gonna be sesame seeds because I love them so. And they're black and they're pretty. Okay, so that's that. So what do we do now? We are gonna, again, just moisten our hands because the way to keep this. So we're gonna take our two points, one's at my stomach, one's far away, and we're going to fold in. Okay, fold in, fold in, tight, put a little bit of finger with the water, and look, it's gonna stay, okay? Everyone sees that, okay? And now we are going to close this, right? We're gonna close this side and we're carefully doing this. Pretend you're wrapping a beautiful present for whomever you love, right? Your favorite, favorite person. And you want, you're like me and you wanna keep the wrapping after you end up opening it, okay? Oh, and I see there's a little hole in my paper, which is kind of a drag, actually. Okay, that is closed. Everyone, I've made a square, and now we're going to wrap this, right? Wrap, wrap, and you could make six, seven, eight of these, right? You're going on a picnic, and you're going to 
put them all and you're pushing it together now. Okay, that pushing together. See what we have here? We have a package, okay? We have a package that is so beautiful. Let's make just one more quick. Okay, so you see it and then we'll move on to the next thing because I don't want to run out of time and I could make these with you. Wendy, while we're doing this, you could see if there's any quick questions um, and I could try to answer them while we're making one with tofu this time. There are questions, Carol. Um, instead of rice, can you use quinoa instead? Um, you know, it is an idea that I never would have thought about. Um, and I bet you could, I bet you could. The thing that's important though, is you wanna maybe cook the quinoa so that it's um, sticky. You know, like when you make the quinoa sometimes and it ends up all stuck together because you've added more water because you've made a mistake. Actually, you know what? Some people love it that way. That's not a mistake. Some people love it all congealed and, and like that. But yes, I think you could. It's not going to be the same thing because we are, but if someone has a you know, problem with rice, of course, make the substitute that sounds like it could work. Awesome. Speaking of substitutes, there was a question about um, umeboshi plum vinegar, which I know is salty. Would you recommend the, the can that be used, the umi? Um, it could be used. I have that in my cabinet, you know. Um, you could use that. You could. I mean, the, the marin is the best, you know, and the, the substitutes for marin, I'll tell you, if you don't have the marin for the for the rice wine vinegar, there are other substitutes that you might have in your cabinet already. One, we discussed the rice wine vinegar, the yellowish kind that I showed you. The other thing is um, common is sake. If you have, if for some reason you happen to have sake wine in your house, that would be a perfect addition uh, instead of the marin. And then some of you, um, I because I've talked about it a lot, might have um, sherry vinegar. Sherry vinegar is a little bit sweet and could actually add, use, work perfect as a substitute. Excellent. And also speaking of substitutes, if you can't find the Hakure turnips, can you substitute daikon? Oh yeah, and you know what? I was just, you know what? The, the, the turnips today for me were so perfect because why? Because we're talking about Japanese food and someone just gave me a bunch of turnips. Um, we are going to try to use them, but you don't have to have them at all. <laughs> and I just want you to see that I cut this very thin. You could leave it like it was fat, but because I want so much variety in my little sandwich, I actually cut it thin, okay? And I'm going to put the, mm, let's just think about this. We could put the nice, turnips here. No, the white on white is not a good idea. Let's get the avocados in, right? Avocados in. Uh, we could use some carrots too. I like definitely the lovely purple cabbage because again, it's about when we're kind of cut things open. Okay, not too much. Okay, I wish I had some beets. And then I'm gonna of course use the turnip because it's sweet, right? It's a little bit sweet. I'm just going to cut this very thin. And you could make some ribbons. I didn't show you that. We could also take a Persian cucumber, right? Here's a Persian cucumber. And where did my peeler go? And we could make ribbons just like we did with the carrot, okay? So again, you would want to just press down here, take off the skin. Of course, this is edible. You're not, oops, you're not going to get rid of that. Um, you're gonna just make your cucumber ribbon, right? Isn't that a good idea? And those will be incredibly beautiful in the sandwich, okay? That's your other idea. You see how simple that is? And let's see if we could put a few ribbons into this sandwich and it'll be nice and crunchy. And then look at what that means. We have white and green and purple and we have all these colors. Looks and I still have to put my piece of rice on top because it usually is sandwiched between two pieces. Okay, so that's that. Gonna get my fingers a little bit wet. Just dry them off. 
Wendy, was there other things? There are a couple more. Okay, uh, I'm listening. Okay. I just wanted people to see what's yes. going on here. Absolutely beautiful. You have a couple people salivating in the chat, just so you know. But okay. um, no, it looks so amazing. And could I just tell you that I just had an image of like a five-year-old or a seven-year-old. I mean, this is children's fun, okay? If any of you have family, you have a niece, a nephew, you can borrow a kid from somewhere. I don't know, but this is the kind of fun. I just literally felt like I was making a snow cake here for a minute. So do grab some young people because young people love this kind of thing. Uh, it, it, I cannot tell you how many children I've taught over the years. They're now adults. And they say, oh, my childhood memories are with you, Carol, of cooking. But I'm not kidding you. The, the beauty of padding and kids love this. It's so awesome. you're taking uh, them around the world with your um, food, food delicacies. Question, how long will this last in the fridge? Um, you know what, they say a couple days, honestly, and I've done it a couple days. I've been with you, Wendy, when I've given you a bunch of them to take on a trip, right? But honestly, you wanna eat them as soon as possible. Right. And why do you want to eat them as soon as possible? You want the nor the nori right now is getting soft, okay? But you want it to be a little bit crunchy, just a little bit, okay? So we're going to pass this one up and then we're going to be done because we have to move on. You know, as usual, I'm talking and telling you all so many things and um, we're sealing this package up with my fingers. And sometimes this is a big sandwich. Like I see now that I really, really stuck this thing. This is a really big sandwich. And why? Because I got carried away, but it's okay. It's going to all fit together. And I'm gonna, it's not as pretty as the first one because I made it so fat. That's why you have to be conscious. It's the same thing if you're making, if you are making the um, sushi when you're making a roll, the finding the perfection of the amount of ingredients um, that you put inside. It's, or it's like making a burrito. If you overfill a burrito or you overfill anything that you're rolling, you're in immediate trouble, right? You are in immediate trouble. So it is the art of learning the balance. And isn't that what all of us have to learn, balance? Here is our second sandwich. So let's move this, okay? We are going to move on to our next thing that I'm gonna just show you. We're gonna get a nice sharp knife. And I wish I remembered which way I put that tofu. Doesn't matter. We're going to cut it. I like cutting it in a diagonal, okay? And we are gonna open that. Can you see all that? Does everybody see? And of course we have to add more sesame seeds. This is my idea of adding more sesame seeds. And you can cut through the plastic. I did not this time. Let's just cut through the plastic. Okay, here we go. That is looking like that. So we're going to present this. Let's go. And then we're gonna cut this one. And this one looks so beautiful. Stunning. Right? Yeah. So beautiful. Everybody can do this. You don't need a degree. You don't need anything. You just need the ingredients. And it's so simple. The, it's so simple, really. You make, you can put the tofu, the, the, the carrots, it's all done. It's easy. So let's move all this cutting board, making a mess here. Of course, I have sesame seeds every place possible. Okay, and we're gonna wipe them away. And we're going to move this and we're going to move this in so that you can see how beautiful. And I love, this would be a great party, right? And let's just, you know what, this is a pink. Here, I'm just getting a scissors and I'm attacking that scissor map. Okay, so you could stack them up like this. You could stack them like this. You could mix and match. So someone could take one tofu, one carrot, one, one, you know, so, so that is that, okay? Everybody's good. Um, any questions at all? One, one very uh, quick one until, I mean, before you move on is, can you just repeat um, how you got the rice to be so sticky? 
I know you. The rice is naturally sticky. Okay, is sushi rice, and it's it's inherent in its stickiness. The thing is that you just want to follow. If you don't follow my directions that I've given you, simply follow the directions on the package. Okay, and the very important thing is the rinsing. Let the water get clear, get rid of all the starch, let it get clear, okay? And then the soaking. If you don't, if you're rushed, soak it for 30 minutes or do what I did last night, soak it and go to bed <laughs> and then pull it out the next day. You haven't done anything but left it in the fridge and then you cook it for 20 minutes, okay? Great, thank you. Is any other questions for our, did anything else? No, nope. oh, that's it for now. Wow, okay. Wow, I'm missing that cutting board, so we'll get out another cutting board. If we're missing one, we get another one out. So the next salad that we're gonna make, again, if any of you have been in the Food for Life classes, maybe you've seen this, and I, I can't make this particular dish enough. Every time I make it, someone says, I've gotta have the recipe. So therefore, I've decided, I'm sharing it with you, okay? So what do we need for this recipe? It would be helpful if I don't try to memorize things and we actually look at the recipe, okay? So this recipe is right here and it has several things. It has soba noodles, okay? And what are soba noodles? I particularly, there are lots of kinds of soba noodles. Most of them are wheat, but the ones that you can look for is the buckwheat ones. Okay, those are especially delicious. If you've never been introduced to buckwheat, buckwheat is delicious for you, as well as it's tasty, okay? Now, for some reason, while I'm here in New Mexico, these buckwheat noodles are like the most expensive thing in the world. Luckily, I had a package from New York because for some reason, these buckwheat noodles, where I live here, cost $8. I'm not quite sure why, but that's what is the scoop. So I have been buying um, other packages that are called, this one says 100% buckwheat, okay? The cheaper ones here locally for me are wheat and buckwheat, okay? So they cost $2.99, where the buckwheat ones, I think if you're shopping in New York, I can't tell you where else you might be in California. Linda, if you're on, I'm not sure, but I always think of you when um, I'm thinking about California. And the fact is, is that I like the buckwheat ones. Now, what other kinds of, there's a lots of other brands. Um, there's this brand, K-O-Y-O. This is my favorite brand. And I also used to get these in New York. It's called King Soba. And I think, Wendy, Wendy, this was the brand I gave you to put a link in. Um, why? Because it's my favorite brand. I used to get it at the Colossus stand, you know, on Lexington and 28. This is, this is $5, okay? So it's not $8, it's not $2.99, but why are these delicious? They're organic and they have no salt in them. No salt, which is kind of a hard thing to find. So again, there are millions of kinds of buckwheat and there are even noodles you could use that I love very much, these noodles. I don't know if you can see them. These are, uh, these are a gift to me and these are sweet potato vermicelli. Could you use these kind of noodles in what we're making? Of course. If you wanna use rice noodles to make what we're making, of course. We're just making a simple ginger dressing we're putting vegetables with it and noodles. And if you say, I don't even want to eat noodles. I don't want to eat noodles because I'm possibly watching my weight or whatever the case may be, then get a spiralizer and make some of your own zoodles, okay? Or just go to the Whole Foods or the Trader Joe's and buy those zucchini noodles that are already spiralized and then you don't have to do anything, okay? But the idea is they're noodles, with vegetables. And we all love this kind of thing. It's cold, it's refreshing, and it has that wonderful taste of ginger and garlic. And so let's get making these things. So what do we need? We need a bowl. I have already pre-cooked, I pre-cooked the noodles. Now they are here in a colander. And of course, if I were to turn these over, it would look like a cake. Okay, they would be all stuck together, but I had to make them ahead of time. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna run them under very cold water. Did I put oil on them like people normally do? No way. I just put the, um, 
cold water and I'm refreshing them as we speak. Okay. And I'm just breaking them apart with my hands. And they're all stuck together right now. And actually, while I'm refreshing them, some of them are breaking into pieces. They were long noodles, and now they're breaking into smaller pieces. But I don't really mind that they're broken because you know what? When you're going to eat in front of someone, do you want to face, you know, it's not like ramen when you're supposed to be slurping up the noodles. This is really, uh, you know, like spaghetti, right? Long noodles. So some of them have broken. I've gotten them drained. They're no longer dripping and they're going into the bowl. Okay. Now we're going to make the dressing. The dressing is very simple. Okay. It needs three tablespoons of rice wine vinegar. So I'm going to get the rice wine vinegar that's not seasoned and because that's the one I prefer. And we're going to put three tablespoons. So three tablespoons of vinegar, one and two and three. Then we need the same amount of soy sauce. Now, again, I'm using just the tamari. Um, I try to use tamari and this is gluten-free soy sauce. And it's also reduced sodium. Again, I don't know if Desiree's here today, but if she is, I know she's my gluten-free student and, my, and she cannot eat soy. So she would use the coconut aminos or the liquid rag. So three of these, trying to talk and think about Desiree for a moment. Two. I'm here. <laughs> oh my God, I love it. I love it. You see how I remember you? And this way I think of you now every time I use my tamari. So, okay, so then what else do we need in this simple dressing? Again, we are going to get my little cute uh, thing here. And I have already chopped, um, I have two teaspoons of garlic. Oh no, two cloves of garlic, two cloves of garlic. I use just half a jalapeno, okay? And I'm reminding all of you that these seeds are very hot, not to take them out with your finger. What is a good way? You either put a plastic bag over your hand and you take them out with your thumb, or my very favorite way is just to get a spoon, right? And then scoop it out, scoop out those. Don't go digging in your jalapeno with your thumb or your nails because the minute you touch your eye or you touch your lip, you could be in trouble with the hotness of those seeds. So you wanna always clear out those seeds, they're hot, okay? And then you would slice this really thin and then chop it. Okay, so what I've done already, two cloves of garlic, half of a jalapeno is going right in there. Okay, and we've talked a million times about ginger. Um, this is the ginger. I have peeled it and then I have chopped it, okay? And I need two teaspoons and I kind of roughed it out. Let's just see if I did a good job here. I don't know, I just kind of eyed it and I was chopping, chopping. There's one, okay, and here is two, okay, two. And there's a little bit left over absolutely use it, okay? There's no way that I'm not using that, okay? So this is gonna go away from us, okay? And we are going to stir. So is this all that goes in here? Yes, at this moment, this is all that goes in here. We are mixing our, and what else are we gonna put in? We have a variety of things we can do. It's all up to you. You could grate some carrots if you'd like. You could, um, Today, we are doing red peppers, right? Red, I julienned red, yellow, and orange. How did I get so many colors? I love buying these bags of these little peppers, okay? I love that because they just come red, yellow, orange in the bag. They're a little bit of a pain because they're small, but I like them for snacking in the morning and the afternoon, but I also love them because they provide three colors for me. And that means I don't have to cut a whole red one or a whole green one, I get three colors. So we're gonna put these peppers that I've already sliced, we're just gonna put them in there, okay? What else are we gonna put? I actually decided to have broccoli because I love broccoli in this. So what did I do to make this broccoli? I cut raw broccoli, right, with the knife. I'm just gonna show you very quickly. 
let me get the knife clean because right now it has sushi on it. And I cut the broccoli off the big stem, right? And I like actually cutting it so that I have a lot of the a lot of the stem, right? Some people cut it so they just have the top of the floret, but I love the stem. So I literally cut it like this. So they're long and skinny, right? They look like this. Okay, can you see like that? Basically, that's what I, and then what I did was you could steam them, you could roast them. What I just did was I took a skillet on the stove and instead of sauteing them, you know how we usually use water or broth, I actually put a small smidgen of water in it and I kept the pan very dry, which would be called braising, okay? Braising is a technique. So in the skillet, I put a little, little bit of water and I let the broccoli just sit there. I didn't sit there and stir it, I just let it sit. And what happens when you do that? It actually starts to get brown and crispy on the edges, believe it or not. So it kind of looks, I don't know if I can show you, but it has brownness, okay? And I always cook the broccoli so it's a little bit al dente. You don't want to overcook it. You want it to be a little bit crunch, but you want it to be bright green. Okay, so we have our broccoli, right? And that is extra broccoli. Now I left the stem here. I wanted just to remind all of you that I try not to throw anything away, anything. Um, and the stem, if any of you eat in a Chinese food and you order a big plate of vegetables, you almost will find something in it that will look like this. I'm not kidding. You won't know what it is. You'll wonder and you'll say, oh, is that some Chinese vegetable I've never seen before? It's actually, they're showing you that you're eating the stem. That you think the restaurant, they throw it out. No, they wanna give this to you as food, okay? So um, everything is food, okay? Even the tops, I didn't mention, in our turnips. These are tops, these are delicious, and these are, can be cooked, okay? It's just like we've talked about beets being two for one. You get beets, you get red beets, and you get the tops. So these can be cooked, really lightly sauteed and delicious, okay? And I'm just reminding you, this. I kept this out, to tell you that this can be steamed or sauteed, and this is food too, okay? Don't throw it out, okay? So what's gonna else is gonna go in here? I have, it's spring here in the Southwest, okay? I know you all had spring two months ago, but maybe you can still get some snap peas. I'm putting snap peas in this. It certainly doesn't, I haven't made this salad in ages, and I thought it has to have snap peas. And on the side, we're, you're gonna see, we're gonna decorate. I have what are called pea shoots. Again, another mystery vegetable, maybe you're not familiar, but if you go to the market and you ask, and they sell these pea shoots, okay? What are pea shoots? They're the actually what's growing on the vine with the pea, with the pod, only these are the shoots. And when you eat it, you can eat this cold in your green salad, or you can lightly saute it. I almost in the summer never put it into the skillet. And I simply, I literally, this is like eating peas, okay? So delicious. I didn't tell you how I got to the peas. These are the pea pods. They have stems. There is a back. So you take the pod and you literally pull the back. Now that one didn't have a back, but you're just basically, often it has a string on the back and you're just trying to pull that off. And then I put these in boiling water for less than 30 seconds. They literally will get bright green in 30 seconds. You immediately take them out of the water and then you put them in an ice bath. An ice bath or you just put, I put two cubes. I put the hot peas when they came out of the water into the bowl and I put two ice cubes on top because you want to chill them and you want to stop that cooking immediately so that they remain French, fresh and crunchy, okay? So enough of me talking. We're gonna pour this dressing over this, okay? We're gonna get rid of all this for now. We're also going to cut somewhere. I really like, I have these fresh onions, okay? Usually scallions don't look like this fat, but again, I'm just at the market. And here it is, even though it is summertime, it feels like spring to me. Um, they have spring onions, okay? I'm just gonna cut this. You would have a scallion. This is a spring onion. 
but you probably would cut it. And I'm just gonna chop it, okay? For those of you, like my friend, my dearest friend, who doesn't like onions, who I always try to sneak them in. I just try to sneak them in so that he doesn't know that I'm putting onions in, and he'll pick them out if he doesn't like them. I never think about not putting onions because I want onions in my salad, okay? So those are cut. Now you probably could use more, but let's just put those in. We'll save a few. I always save a few for the top, okay? And then mm, you could also put cilantro in now if you want, it's up to you, but we can just, let's just cut that really quick. Okay, and how are we doing on time? We're almost there. Um, we'll put the cilantro and the onions at the same time. Okay, that's gonna be done. Okay, so get rid of all of this extra things that we don't need. Move all these things out of here. Let's go away. The beauty of a big kitchen is amazing. Um, and we have a presentation bowl. And this is our bowl here, we have a big bowl. Now I'm gonna wash my hands for the hundredth time. Okay, hundredth time. So washing hands. The best tools you could use are your hands. People say, why don't you polish your nails? I said, because my hands are on food all the time. Okay, so we're gonna toss this, okay? It's got enough dressing. It's never gonna be soaking in dressing. I don't want it to be soaking. I just want it to be flavored. Now this salad is the perfect picnic salad. It's also the perfect picnic lunch. And oh my gosh, I just had a vision of putting sesame seeds all over this. Okay, so let's just taste it, just for tasting sake. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm, mm. Delish. Again, you can ad lib. If you don't want it to be spicy, it's a little spicy, cut back on your jalapeno. You know your own taste buds, okay? So this is the salad going into the bowl. Now, if I were going on a picnic, I would immediately put all the containers out or even packing this for lunch and I would just pack it into several, maybe mason jars, maybe six mason jars and just pack it and it's ready to go for when everyone's running out the door. Okay, we're going to put our topping on here, right? A little bit of topping, more green, the more, look at all of that on the cutting board. Okay, and of course, of course, where are those sesame seeds? I want to get those sesame seeds it's another reason for me to say you can buy sesame seeds and they're not just for one thing, right? So we're just gonna sprinkle these to make it prettier. Don't need to, but you have them, so you might as well use them. And they're gonna be lovely. And we could even cut tofu. Our leftover tofu could go in here too. Okay, so you have two things, two cool dishes to take on your picnic to take on your airplane trip when you're going for the first time in a year to visit your family or your friends. Um, and two things for lunch, right? If you're going back to the office and it's all fresh and cool, we haven't used a stove, we haven't used any machines, we've used our peeler and we've used our knife and we've used all fresh vegetables and I think that is our completion here, Wendy. Um, I did have a little fast dessert, but I think we should get to the questions. And um, my dessert <coughs> would be so fast that I'm not sure we need to even do it. Um, you're being asked to FedEx your food to various different participants. Just so you know, <laughs> everybody wants to um, have some. You're getting comments in the chat. Beautiful, Carol, always entertaining. Love you. Wonderful. Um, Myra asks, can you take this through TSA? Um, Myra, I have taken it through TSA without any problems. Carol um, has uh, happily fed me almost every trip I've been on in the last year, but now she's moved to Taos, much to my sadness. But anyway, um, actually two years ago, I didn't travel this year. But anyway, Carol, one uh, quick question, a light one. Yes. What is the peeler oh. that you're using? Um, oh yeah, and us, honestly, yeah. I forgot about putting our lovely pea greens. 
okay? You know, as, as you know, even when I make bean dishes, my favorite thing is to put on more greens, right? Right? So here I'm just kind of redressing the green salad. And when we toss it, but the, the peas shoots are on there. Um, you know what? It's not a big deal, the peeler. Sometimes, you know, I don't promote anybody brand, but this is just an oxo. It's just oxo and I love it. I actually have several of them. One time I threw mine away in the garbage. I was just like, where the, where did I go with the damn peeler? And I actually just threw it away. So I have two, I have a backup one. And um, you just always want to make sure that you're cleaning the back of it because a lot of gunk gets stuck in it. And if you had one peeler for 20 years or even five, go get yourself another one because it's really nice when they're sharp. Okay, so, and they're just a few dollars. And this one's good because it's got a good grip. That's what OXO is about. Gorgeous. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I think I got to all the questions, but you're getting a ton of comments about um, how delicious everything is. And um, let's see, I think someone wants to stop by. Uh, Talos, New Mexico, you've gotten a question. Is someone willing to come? Is someone, <laughs> am I gonna have like, I miss all of you. Like, honestly, I wish someone would just say I'm showing up for dinner, like in 10 minutes. Um, I don't know. Let's see if Terry wants to add in the chat. And um, let's see, you're getting a warm hello from Loretta, who last time she saw you. I love Loretta day. very much. I mean, actually, I love all of the people that I know. It's just that I don't get to see any of you. So I have to count on Wendy for telling me um, exactly who's saying what. That's yeah. what I'm doing now. Um, so Carol, this is dessert. Desiree. I just, I just made the dish. Just now? That's awesome. Carol, oh my God, Desiree, oh my God, oh my God. Awesome. You That's are awesome. you are the prize, well, you're not the only prize student, but I have all Shining Star students and I brag about them so much because they make me so proud. I, I do want you to know that living in the Southwest, I have stars in the sky, but I do think about my students who I'm so proud of all the time. And Desiree, thank you for showing and sharing. I, that is, you've made my day. Um, just, uh, I know we've gotten a question about dessert. And so this is what Carol is um, as a little treat giving to us now. And it started with cutting up a cantaloupe. So, um, Let's see. You know, and I just want to tell everyone, this is not, again, the people like Desiree or Yvonne, if Yvonne's here or Loretta's here, any of you have been in my Food for Life, life. this is really uh, not my fun recipe. Here. Oh, nice. I, oh, nice. See, I just guess. I guess I, you know what? I intuitively just hope you're here and then I, and then I don't know, you know? So anyway, some of you may have seen this simple, simple dessert, but I love it so that I, these, again, if you've seen something once, you have to say, you know what? So I've seen it once, but the fact is it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because sometimes you have to show things twice to remember that you've forgotten them, right? Like, oh yeah, I used to make that a year ago and I haven't made it in a year. So what's, it doesn't hurt to see something twice, right? So I'm not doing the whole cantaloupe. If I were doing the whole cantaloupe, I would have definitely kept it whole like this and I would peel it all at one time. But I wanna save some of this cantaloupe for tomorrow in a different shape or a different thing, right? So I'm just slowly kind of cutting away and giving it a little, I call it, it's like taking off the turtle's back or something, you know? It's like just slowly peeling it. I did already take out the seeds, right? They're gone, okay? The seeds are something you cannot eat. It's the one thing I actually do throw away. Um, but it is all compost material, right? So hopefully all of you are getting to be composting. Um, I am not doing it this moment yet, but I will be. My yard is getting ready for my, okay? Now, in the restaurant business, I want to tell you, we wouldn't hack away at these green bits. Do you see these green bits that are still here? It's hard to see. Um, let me just see where I can put this so that you don't see. There are still green bits. You would actually take your handy dandy peeler. Unless you know how to use the knife and you would take away a teeny, teeny bit, right? So yes, you can take a knife and just trim it. 
But why is the peeler so good? Because you want to keep everything, you know, nice and round, right? So you can take the peeler to get rid of those few bits. And again, you could have carrot cantaloupe ribbons, okay? But I've talked enough about ribbons today, okay? And we're just going to cut this. And you're gonna say, this is the simplest dessert, Carol. We don't need you to show us a dessert like this, but you do need me to learn about a dessert like this because I certainly never had thought of this idea and I absolutely love it. And it changed my life about cantaloupe. Um, and what are we gonna do? We're gonna get a bowl. Okay, we're going to get a bowl out of the cabinet and we're going to put this cantaloupe in here. Okay, and again, we're just doing some cantaloupe. Now, I like making skewers in the summertime with blueberries and watermelon and cherries and whatever, but you could do skewers if you wanted with this. I'm just cutting cubes. Now, the good thing about eating fruit, I want to tell you, is when you get this cantaloupe home, don't just leave it on the counter forever. You want it to ripen. And then you do want to prep it and just put it away. Cut it up like this, because this is how you're going to eat it, right? And it's a little bit of work to uh, peel it. But if you have it already peeled, it's just like the lettuce that you bring home. If you wash it, rinse it, put it away properly, then you're gonna just take two minutes to take the lettuce out and make a salad, right? So yes, some time has to be invested at some point. But if you're a busy, busy, busy person during the week, then just get this part done so that it's ready to go. I run out the door now and have a thing of fruit ready to go when I'm going out. Okay, so here we go. This is no recipe, okay? You don't need a piece of paper for it, so don't write it down. All we're doing is cutting up cantaloupe, and then we have a little bit of ginger, powdered ginger. Could you use fresh ginger? Absolutely, okay? But let's just say you don't have the fresh ginger, and I'm gonna use just a little spoon, and we're just gonna, I'm gonna estimate what I had a half of, and I'm gonna put probably like, mm, that's like a half a teaspoon. And I'm just gonna sprinkle, 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 sprinkle. Now, if you wanna take it one step farther, you could chop some mint, okay? But all you have to do is toss the ginger, right? We made sushi, anagirazu and Asian noodles, and now we're making yummy, yummy ginger cantaloupe, okay? And we just taste it. Mmm, mmm, oh my God. It's so yummy. The longer you let it sit, the more delicious, okay? The more delicious it becomes, okay? Let's just, again, you could mix raspberries, so a little color, a little bit of mint if you had, right? And the longer it sits, if you put this in an airtight container and tomorrow you take it out, some of the juices have run out of the cantaloupe and they've made a nice little gingery syrupy thing, which is so yummy. All that sweet juice, right? Now it's a little over full here in my green bowl, but you get the idea, right? It's so simple. Could this go on a skewer? Absolutely. You get a long skewer, skewer this with some strawberries, some blueberries, and then someone's eating and says, oh, that ginger is really delicious on the cantaloupe. That is my dessert, fresh fruit for the summer, okay? No pastry, no nothing, just fruit, okay? That's it, Wendy. We are done. That's awesome, we're in right on time. Um, it's such a delight to uh, just watch you put this together. And one of the things that you've taught me, which I also really love, is how you pick up certain flavors dish to dish to dish. So you've got, you could actually have this all together, use one of the sandwiches as an appetizer, have your noodles and then the dessert. And you picked up in different ways, the ginger throughout or the Asian flavor throughout. And Correct. it's such a good um, technique for uh, really making a very satisfying meal. And so um, I just love that always about your cooking and your, your presentation. Let's just see if there's any other question. There was one about Hatch Chilies from New Mexico. Oh. And have you been to the Hatch Chili Festival? 
I haven't been to the Hatch Chili Festival yet, but everything is Hatch, Hatch, Hatch. I mean, is <laughs> there's Hatch chili sauce, there's Hatch peppers, there's Hatch. That, but they're they're not just like yes, you could buy a little bag, right? You could buy a little bag of Hatch chilies, but they sell them in like the twenty five pound size, as if you were going to need this many Hatch chilies. So um, thanks for asking about me locally. Um, I'm learning a new area and. Like I said, I think we're two months behind on, on our, our, our seasons. We're just starting to plant all of our things in the garden now. Um, you all, if you're on the East Coast, are definitely into summer. Um, and um, I guess that's what happens in the mountains when it's still cold. And um, things are, you know, you have to wait. You have to wait. We have a very short season here. But thank you for asking about the hatch chilies, whoever that was. I'm just going to um, highlight a couple of things I want to just draw everyone's attention to. Please join us at Plant Powered Metro New York. If you're not already on our newsletter, please um, join the newsletter. There's always something interesting going on. There's a very, very special event coming up on June 21st for the men in your life. Um, as you know, we've often focused a lot on women's health because the healthcare system um, more years and years ago, less so now was very focused um, on men. And there's been a kind of trying to right that situation. So there's a lot of focus on women, but now we're back to real um, look at men's health issues. So for the men in your life or for yourselves, or as you, um, as you are encountering men and their issues, um, please do come. So it's June 21st. It should be a very special night. Um, it's called Protein, Prostate, and Performance. And we will also be addressing for women and men the advantages of a whole food plant-based diet for athletes. So um, it, it's really, it's for men and for women. And please do come and please tell the men in your life. Um, all right, we've got a virtual potluck coming up. We have some in-person events, which we're thrilled to be offering after uh, this period of time. And the next demo with Chef Carol, there are two throughout the summer. One will be on July 11th, Sunday, July 11th, and the one after that on August 15th. And as usual, Carol can be emailed um, at carol at the veggievanguard.com and Instagram at the veggievanguard. And oh my gosh, you're getting comments. And Wendy, don't forget the E. I need, do need to tell people if they're yes. trying to email me and I always write back. I, I love when people write, but don't forget the E at the end of my name. It's C-A-R-O-L-E at the veggievanguard.com. So thank you for mentioning both classes. Our last class, my last class is August 15th. From that month, that will be a Sunday. And then we take a little break at Plant Powered Metro New York for a little summer hiatus. And I believe we return on September 8th. So there are some weeks there where we all just have summertime and enjoy ourselves. But I look forward to seeing all of you the next time. And we will keep pizza on the agenda, but when it's a cold wintry day for all of us. And we want to turn that oven on to 500 degrees, okay? So I have not forgotten gotten anybody's pizza requests and um i am so happy i think i i i actually cannot see all of the hollywood squares um i think i see gloria um maybe i do maybe i'm imagining um if you're there i'm sending big hugs to all of you and um happy summer and do keep it fresh do keep it local and absolutely keep it cold so that you can stay cool in those 90 degree days we all have them <laughs> excellent advice just so you know you're getting tons of thank yous excellent much appreciation gratitude and if everyone wants to just unmute and just say goodbye we will we will be saying or even goodbye, but... tell me you're there and i can't i miss I connecting can't. with this is gloria Hi, <laughs> hey thank gloria you, Carol. Hi. this you, is loretta this is Linda Lord, here. I is Linda here today? Linda's here. Laura nice. is here. Anyway, a lot, a lot, a lot of familiar names. Dana's here. Um, nice. Carol. Is Carol here? Is Carol Kalowski yes. here? Yes. A lot of Hi, Hi Chef Carol. Excellent. Oh, good. I hope all of you try this. You know, really, it's making a sandwich, okay, everybody? 
It's making a sandwich. It's not so hard. And for those of you that have the grandkids, I'm not kidding you, go reel them in and say, let's play, right? Let's pat and let's shape because I'm not kidding you. Kids love this kind of thing. Yes, they, they love do. it. So I just really encourage, and Loretta, it's so nice to see you. I um, lost 15 pounds. 15 oh, pounds, <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I did show you my new That's outfit awesome. today. I have a new apron. It's orange, Ooh. and I'm I'm feeling like a big carrot. I just want to tell you <laughs> that I, I I decided this is my carrot outfit for the day, and um, my new apron, which I'm very happy with. Um, I actually started painting. Would you believe I ruined an entire apron with paint? Mm -hmm. But I'm so happy. I haven't been painting and very long time and I have a full apron now with paint um which is also a comfort zone for me so I had to order myself a brand new orange apron and I got a green shirt so I would look like my logo I guess a big carrot so thank everybody so much don't forget that you keep the fish in the sea and make your carrot locks if you're into you know with the um with the smoke with the um smoke liquid the look which we've used before and the um and the marin the two things and if you didn't have marin you could just use some rice wine vinegar okay but just mm -hmm. the carrots are delicious if even if you just cook the carrots and don't even think about marinating just cook the carrots in their little foil tent and then make ribbons you'll say wow i never knew carrots could be so delicious wendy do we have to register for the next two uh, classes with Carol, or do you automatically? No, um, you do have to register at the time, and um, you'll find it on our events page, um, um, plantpowermetronewyork.org events. Um, I'm not sure if it's on the website yet. So. It is. I think okay. it is. I think it is, and you just click it. But like, they, if they're not there, but it should be up there because we planned, and I, I'm pretty sure it's up there. Yeah. So sometimes um, we're delayed getting it up, but hopefully it'll be up there soon. But you do have to register each and every time, and and I absolutely encourage all of you to come to potluck if you can. It is the most fun. Of course, one day you all will be doing potluck intimately in New York. Um, but while we're all still virtually potlucking, um, come and show up. It is one of the most fun things besides my cooking show. Why? Because we all bring dishes and we talk about food for an hour, what we're eating, what we discovered at the Trader Joe's, what we, you know, uh, why we don't like this food, but what we can substitute. You know, it's a very fun just sometimes there's just 10 or 12 of us but it's a really fun time so if you can come to potluck i i encourage you it's tomorrow night just uh -huh. so, um anybody uh, it's just for one hour the hour goes so fast and we swap recipes you know i have to swap but you're asked to put a recipe in the in the google document and and then you end up if there's 10 of us you end up with 10 recipes so kind of fun